Uh, what is it? It's low code AI. I could just very quickly go, and you have to pay a license for it. It's not cheap. Um, and it performs a, a number of different uh, solution areas, especially around text and images. It allows us to do automation within Power Automate and with Power Apps. It's very easy. You can do, if you want to use AI Builder, it's just as uh, use the in Power Automate, there's the uh, AI Builder connector. We just use it, we can call the models and get our data as well. We can use them inside Power Apps, in Canvas Apps. We can, we can use the uh, some, uh, controls for using the Canvas to so scan images and we get object detection with those. We can also use them in the formulas. I don't know if people are aware of these formulas. You do AI Builder dots and you get like sentiment analysis just with the formulas. Very easy to consume inside that. And to build the models, uh, it actually comes with some pre built models. So you just go straight in, seems like a, a language detection center of nice sheet, so you don't need to do anything. You can also build your own models, so your own, own processing on your own documents. Where you swing the door shut. Yeah, you can actually upload your own documents, uh, and own pictures, and then process those. So you can sort of do your own training. But it's like, we talk about training models, you just press a button. It's very wizard driven, very simple to use. That's what most people think of it. Uh, so I, I call it AI for Dataverse. Uh, being able to, and it, is, so it comes over those things, vision, language, you've also got a prediction model where you can predict, uh, it actually creates new data. So you say, okay, predict what my sales are from the other notes. So you get add a column into your table, and you get a prediction value. So that's quite straightforward, you don't need any skill really to use it. But it's quite limited. Uh, so yeah, so this time we can consume them. Uh, we can build and train the model, we use the pre-existing ones, we can consume it in canvas and power, so we can't consume it inside a model driven app. Oh, we can use the prediction. But it, what it does, it allows us to create that enhanced user experience. Uh, makes it very, they're very simple, easy to use. Is there any way you can hit it with code? Uh, with this, yes. Okay. Everything's available. Well, AI Builder, I don't know, I'm going to talk about it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to get into that. Okay. Like I say, I feel it's meant to be no, no code, no code. Yeah. But essentially, uh, I'll, I'll come to actually what it is in a minute. Then we've got cognitive services. So, cognitive services, there's about 30 of them. Separate things, uh, they're pre built models. Effectively, they are webs, web, uh, REST APIs you could call. So, if you're a developer, you could use these. They're just REST APIs. They're really trivial to use, very easy to add into your applications, but you need that dev developer skill. But they're broader. Essentially, you are talking about concerns things. It's about taking unstructured data and turning it into something structured that you can use in your program. So extract text out of documents, extract uh, perform images, do certain activities. And you'll see there's actually a bit of an overlap with AI Builder. And I'm going to come to that in a bit, where the overlaps are. So, so this is this is the list. Um, I just want to talk about this list because this is all the cognitive services, and it comes over. We've got decision, language, speech, and vision, different areas. So we've got things like facial detection in here. It's just an API call. I can do text to speech. Um, I can do translation. I can do text analytics. So text analytics includes things like uh, key phrase extraction, name identity recognition, sentiment analysis, a number of different things that you can perform. So some of these here. It's got a great one, it's an anomaly detector. So all of these services are available just through HTTP calls. Now what we have is we have connectors for the Power Platform for some of them. So though we talked about using AI Builder, we have connectors for a whole load of these other things which you just use inside the Power Platform. You may not be aware of them, there's a load of Azure services on here. So, so yes, yeah, things like vision, we've got all the visual ones. Uh, so it's in a sense we have an overlap. I'm, I'm going to talk about the overlap between that and the AI builder in a second. But you see the range. Uh, we don't have connectors for everything. We don't have anything on the speech side uh, or the translator. But it's just an HTTP call. Who here knows how to create a uh, custom connector? You can create a custom connector on these if you want. Or you can just use the HTTP connector to call them. But you've got to do a little bit more work understanding. The they just returned JSON. So are, these are really easy to consume. So if you want to do a bit more, and they're cheaper. To be honest, if I do any AI, I use these. I don't use uh, AI Builder because it's so expensive compared to these. are so cheap to use. I don't want to pay like five hundred dollars a month for whatever it is for something that's going to cost me two or three dollars. 
benefit and knowing how to cook. Well, the custom connectors is a code. <coughs> it's like literally click, 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 you're done. And it's a connector you can then just consume your power up and power on it just the way you do any other connector. Although I suppose you're still paying that $500 for a premium power up license. Well, <laughs> you may only have that. Yeah. Either but, way, they're going to get you. Yeah. You, you may have that license, you may be on premium anyway, so in any case, it's not an extra cost. So, pretty much, I was out saying it's 80 plus. So, let's talk about, and uh, so what I've done here is done a little dialogue of what you can do in AI Builder. And actually, see how little we actually have of this range. So, AI Builder, I always say, is a subset of cognitive services. And yet, yeah, it does custom vision, form recognizing. But basically all of it is a text analytics, so it's not working out there. So all these other ones are not there. And actually when I wrote this out, I was actually really surprised how little it actually did compared to what we can. So it's just a real small subset. And it's very focused around text analytics. So although it looks like not a lot, there isn't really that much there, especially when you compare it to how much of like, the connectors are there. So if you use language understanding, which I've got, I love language of Lewis um, to do things. And then also <coughs> a maker, I can do a QA maker uh, thing, which is really easy to do. So yeah, AI build is a, a lot less. So let's talk about the scary thing, machine learning. Okay, this looks scary, isn't it? Machine learning, I need to be a data scientist, I need to be a dude, mathematician, I'm a mathematician, so I know how to do it, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. This thing about, I just made machine learning, come on in, easy to consume, Okay, and we're going to build and deploy models. And essentially, what I should provide is essentially a platform for building uh, machine learning models. It simplifies what you need to do. It makes it easy to create and deploy the model. You can actually build a machine learning model without writing any code. You know, we're aware of this. You can, we've got, then we can write code if we want. We can use uh, Jupyter Notebooks, we can use R, we can use C Sharp. But we've also got a thing called uh, machine learning design, which is a drag and drop tool. We've got automated ML, which actually just say, Give me the best model for this day, certain days, and it goes away and does it. I mean, you're going to pay for a lot of CPU, uh, but it builds it. And then to deploy it, I just press a button and it deploys it into a Docker container. And I don't use, I, I, don't know, I don't know anything about Docker, but I can deploy one. Okay, and then it's and it just ends up being a web service. It just ends up being a REST API. This is a REST API, we can consume it. So, uh, it has a whole lot of uh, services, but something like this, I, I tend to use machine learning with the machine learning design, it's drag drop tool. But I have to know a bit about the algorithm. I just has a bit more work to do, and you need to get your data, there's a whole lot there, I've probably spent all day on that. So, how can I use that with the Power Platform? Well, it's just the REST API. So I can use the HTTP connector. For what? I just consume it. Uh, I can create a custom connector, which is useful if I want to call it over and over again, make it available to everybody else. But there's something else. And that is, you can now register your machine learning model in AI Builder. And this is how it is. So this is what I did. I did a pneumonia detection one. Okay, and you go and register. This is what it looks like in AI Builder. It says, import model source imported. Can they just use it like anything else? I go to my canvas app and type uh, you only detect a dot and then they get access to its resources. So I've built a machine learning model, I've used it Power Automate. Uh, I actually built this, the one of the demo I do is we, we, we take some photos of uh, x rays in the canvas app and I'm going to say, Have you got pneumonia or not? Just call me out this model, it's instantaneous, it's going off to Azure, call the model, returning back. This is it's been released, but they haven't told anybody about it. There is actually a GitHub on the Power Platform samples on GitHub. If you go into AI Builder, you'll actually find this sample to do the pneumonia detector. But you do need to go into Azure Machine Learning Studio. You have to go build. It does the, it's, It uses Python, so to actually do the deployment, there's a, a standard script you run. Uh, it was a little bit tricky. We've uh, had a few issues with it. It does work, uh, and it just then appears. Okay, so that's really, I mean, this for me is really exciting because we talk, Microsoft talk a lot. You probably heard Microsoft talk about the concept of fusion dev teams. Mm -hmm. You've all heard about pro devs working with our citizen devs. Well, now we have fusion data science. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so I just want to leave you with this. This has been a very quick 20 minutes. Actually, I've done it uh, so that long slow. Um, 
to go through how to use machine learning with Power Platform. The different options you have available. Hopefully you've seen it's not just AI builder. Use, use cognitive services if you can. But if you've got people who build machine learning, do you, you, you build machine learning? No, no, no. But if you did, it's easy to go and use them in the Power Platform. Just to consume them. Okay, and, and therefore, and, it, and the great thing about the Power Platform is it gives you a really nice user interface. I don't have to build anything. And I've actually <coughs> seen Microsoft teams do this. They start using Power Apps or Canvas Apps as a way just to show their data for, say, the, the Bot Framework. It's a user interface on top of Azure. Mm. That's very much the model that I follow and build solutions. I do a lot of work in Azure and I create custom connectors. My, my apps and my flows are relatively simple. I like to create custom connectors and things like that. So that's it. Oh, that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want copies, uh, I'll, I'll see if I, uh, I'll put a post on my LinkedIn through with where I get down oh, the copy, uh, copy of these slides. Uh, more blogs, yeah. More blogs, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? And there's some feedback. Yeah, so please. Any questions on any of that? That was really last information. What sort of things have you uh, have you used the machine learning for? Okay, um, I work with an organisation that get ten thousand. E it's a co uh, complaint handling system. Ten thousand right. emails a week. Yeah. Um, a lot of the people I, I really hate email because people reply. The people who reply thanks. I have a number of people I hate. The people who reply thanks to everything because it goes into your queue. You have to deal with it. So out of those ten thousand emails get about three or four thousand with nothing. So rather people saying okay, or this is done. So they didn't need action, but somebody had to look through them because somebody's got to look at that email. Yeah. Uh, so what we try to do is I put uh, machine learning to actually we examined all the emails over a couple of years. We actually analyzed if they need a response or not, and I built a model for that, effectively to prioritize emails. They wouldn't let me implement it though. <laughs> because then oh it's AI and what's it doing? Is it going to be right? And that's always the challenge you face. I mean, it was a really simple model to build. Uh, so we, look, we actually want to do prioritize, we, 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 under that key phrase, say, okay, there's particular words to look for, sentiment, we, we did like sentiment analysis, keywords, and also this model, which sort of trying to figure out, does it need a response? Yeah. The other one I've, been, I've done with the customers is that we pulled all the data and tried to estimate their churn rate. Their, it's a big problem, what's the, the chance of this customer leaving? Pulling lots of data from different systems. I use actual functions to process that data, and then create a machine learning model. For it. And what would you, so, so then you've got a way of predicting whether it's customer going to leave or not. So you get percentage chance, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there is the thing, if you look at Dynamics 365 Customer Insights, yeah, it does that for you. That's one of the standard models in it. Yeah. And I've done that myself. It's one of the classic machine learning models to do, it, it, business, it, it interest business and churn rate. Or customer lifetime value. Calculate those sort of things. Predict, predict what somebody might spend over a lifetime. So, how valuable a customer are they? If you need to, for example, pull out entity extraction from a whole load of different types of documents, yeah. what rough kind of amount of training effort do you need to throw well, at that? Because Microsoft love to throw, oh, you need to provide 10 documents, and it learns what your document looks well, like. If you're doing that AI build, well, yeah, it does. I mean, AI build does that with, and also got this, uh, it's actually based, uh, so AI build is form processing, it's actually based on the cognitive service called, uh, for recognizer, that has pre-built models. And what they've, uh, what they've done is they've trained the model. What they realize is they, they build this big neural network for doing it. And they realize if they just chop off the last bit, they can make it understand new documents, which is why you only need like 10 to 15 copies. Because it's already been pre-trained to understand the structure. So you don't need to have that many. But assuming the documents are on the same structure. Well, we, they'd have to be. They have to be, they can be they have to be a sample of them. The more you give it, the better. But it, 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 it just takes time. Because you have to go through each one and say, okay, does that mean that and that means that. Yeah, so ideally, I mean, this is why I say trade on invoices. Invoices have a pretty standard structure. Yeah, I've, I've been um, training SharePoint syntax, which under yeah. the hood is effectively a machine learning model. Yeah. Uh, mileage varies massively. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, <laughs> I, I think at the end of the Invoices, day, it's amazing. Yeah. You use a client spec, which yeah. is going to be different well, every time you get one, and it's all over. Yes. I'm not getting to the other side. Too. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, good. No, 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 no. One question. How would you articulate the difference between reporting and AI? Because most conversations you go into, they end up specking out their AI. And you're like, no, you just need a report. Yeah, well, AI is about enhancing the data. 
So I can use AI to create new data, so new bit of value of it. It helps us by reporting. So if we look at dynamics recently from sales, we've now got, uh, in the sales preview, we've got the called uh, people forecasting, which just generate, it generates a, pre, uh, it creates a new field called prediction of the forecast. And then that's in the report. To generate something new. Yes. The 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 sales, in, sales insights, sales in dynamic <laughs> 65 sales, yeah. okay. there's a, there's a, get a dynamic 65 sales insights, it's an add-on sales, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and in part that it has a premium forecasting, well that's one of the options in it, it does that for you. Okay. Do you have a play with any of the machine learning models and sign apps? So, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, the models and sign apps. I have to actually play with sign apps. I'm just curious about how good you think they are. I haven't got those at the same time. I don't think so. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Can you use the phone? Yeah, I'm going to use the phone. 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 I'm going to use the